Welcome back, Petapixel viewers. It is Chris Nichols here. We have a special video for you today because uh, Jaron Schneider, editor-in-chief, he got access to the Fujifilm X106 pre-production camera, and in order to get it to us, he flew up here so we could play with it. We only have a day. Luckily, we've got the sun breaking out, which is nice, but this is it. We've got a few hours to play with this camera, so today's going to be absolutely not a full review. We're really looking at what's exciting and new on this camera. So Jordan, now that there's six series of Fujifilm X100 cameras, you're probably gonna wanna get one of each and start your Fujifilm Museum, right? Yes, that's the plan. Well, best place to go is kh.com because you know that they're gonna have all the inventory that you're looking for and also that their experts have checked over every single piece of gear so you know that you can trust it's gonna be in working and fantastic condition. Plus, I just read an article today, Jordan, there's fake X100s out on the market. You know that at kh.com, you're gonna get an authentic piece of equipment. And instead of buying from like a pawn shop or private sale, kh.com is gonna give you first off a free 180 day warranty and a 21 day return policy that's very generous. So be sure to go to kh.com and check them out because they are Petapixel's preferred pre-owned gear partner. Now, one thing I wanna address right off the top the Fujifilm X100 naming conventions have gotten all crazy. I mean, the first version was the X100, then there was X100S for second, then X100T for third, then X100F for fourth, then they came out with a V for Roman numeral five. Now we're back to VI, Roman numeral six, but everybody called it the X100V, I don't know. Okay, anyways, it's a little bit of a departure. Also, this is a pre-production camera, as I mentioned, so we're not gonna be doing any raw processing today, but I really do get to then focus on the Fujifilm color simulation modes, especially the brand new Reala Ace. We saw that in the GFX100 version two and really liked it. Now we've got it here. I'll shoot some black and white. Well, let's get to the photos. I can't contain this piece of made a house a home inside of me. It's never held me back because it's a fuel that inspires me. Some may call it a dream, but I call it my destiny. I give it all I got, now it's my time to read. So the new X106 has got two main headline features. I mean, that is gonna be the new 40 megapixel sensor in there, as well as the introduction of IBIS. And we'll absolutely talk about those, but I think it's worthwhile talking about how this is still, in a lot of ways, very similar to the previous X100V. Now the X100V body was an incredibly popular camera. I mean, so much so that Fujifilm couldn't even keep up with demand. And that's because it was a really well-designed body. I mean, the controls, the handling, the way that it looks, it's all beautiful. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it. We're actually finding the X106 basically copies an interface. We don't have a joypad just like the V. We have command dials, although honestly, for the most part, you're gonna be using the more vintage style dials for aperture shutter and exposure compensation. Now with displays, I do wish we had a bit more of an upgrade because it has been four years since we saw the X100V body, but we still have the exact same 3.69 million dot EVF as well as hybrid optical viewfinder. The back panel as well, it's nice. It's still that thin, simple articulation screen. It actually does go just a little bit down low lower for when you're shooting above, but effectively it's the same kind of display. Looking at the rest of the body, we've got all the exact same ports that we had on the X100V. So we've got the same small micro HDMI port, we've got the same USB-C port that can also work for headphones. We've also got that 2.5 millimeter mic jack still that you'll probably need an adapter for. Same Fuji NPW126S battery here. And unfortunately, we still have the exact same UHS-1 single SD card slot. That is a little disconcerting just because we still have the same 11 frame per second mechanical burst rates and 20 frame per second electronic shutter burst rates, which is great. But also with the 40 megapixel files, I'm really curious when I have a full production model, how is this gonna handle as far as buffer and SD card clearing? To wrap things up, we do have the same excellent 23 millimeter version two F2 lens here. Now, we really like this on the X100V. It upped the whole game as far as center sharpness goes, close up sharpness, bokeh was really nice, and it will absolutely resolve the new 40 megapixel sensor here. Pity about the focal length though. Okay, so a lot is the same from the Fujifilm X100V. Let's talk about what's different now on the X106. So first off, we have that 40 megapixel sensor that we've seen on cameras like the Fujifilm X-H2. I mean, I love this APS-C sensor. It's sharp, it's got good dynamic range, nice color. I think having an upgrade in megapixels makes a lot of sense for this camera. The only caveat I would say there is 
It does have a fairly slow scan rate. So as far as rolling shutter for video or if you're shooting electronic shutter, you just gotta be a little bit cautious there. That being said though, I really do like the mechanical shooting speeds that I get here at 11 frames per second. I think that's plenty. And also we have the ND filter that we saw in the X100V, four stop ND filter. But the next thing we're talking about is a major hardware change in the X106 and that's the introduction of IBIS. This is the first time we've seen in-body image stabilization on an X100 body. And it does make a lot of sense for a camera that you're going to carry around usually without a tripod in your pocket, maybe doing low light stuff inside restaurants like slow shutter speeds. I think this is a great addition to have here. It's rated for roughly six stops. You actually get a little bit less stability if you're using the optical viewfinder, a little bit more if you're using the EVF or the back panel, but it's a good feature to have now. And another nice new addition to the X100 series is we now have the better autofocus than you've seen in a lot of the other Fujifilm bodies. So first off, we're getting all the subject detection modes. We're getting the birds, the animals, the planes, the trains. That's all nice to have. Face and eye detector still there in a separate menu, unfortunately, still haven't changed that. But another thing we did notice, and this is something we absolutely want to test more fully when we have the full review coming, is the optical viewfinder autofocus seems to be tracking a little bit stickier, and a little bit more effective. So I absolutely want to play with that later on. So, you know, with the addition of Real and all the other stuff that we have, the eternal ones, the nostalgic negs, the Velvias, the Provias, so on and so forth, we're like over 20 Fujifilm simulation modes now. And so I still have the same complaint I had with the X100V, and that's that when I want to quickly change between film simulation modes, I could do something like customize the command dial here to do that. In fact, I'm doing that right now. It's working well, but I wish I could go into the actual film simulation modes and check or uncheck modes that I'm not gonna use on a regular basis. That way I'd have a much smaller menu to cycle through when I wanna switch between these modes. As it is now, I just gotta clickety, clickety, click, click. Okay, so we're gonna talk about video next, but normally for this portion, Jordan likes to shoot it on the actual camera that we're talking about, but because the X106 uses that same 2.5 millimeter mic jack and Jaron forgot to bring the dongles. Great job, Jaron, thanks a lot for that. I flew all the way out here yeah. and I forget Anyways, one thing. Uh, we're not gonna do that. Jordan's gonna shoot on the Fujifilm X-H2S. I'm gonna talk about the video here. As I mentioned before, we have the same 40 megapixel sensor that we have in the X-H2, but the X-H2 didn't crop footage when it went to higher quality video modes. This camera though gives us cropping modes a lot like we've seen in the Fujifilm X-T5. So that means if you're shooting regular 4K up to 30, you're okay, no crop. But if you go to 4K up to 60 frames per second, there is a crop factor. And if you go to 6.2, 2K 30 frames per second, you actually get an even heavier crop. There's also some nice features have been added here. This does now record gyroscopic data, a lot like we've seen in the GFX 100 version two. So coupled with the IBIS, if you wanna do any sort of post stabilization, that should really help out. Also, we do have excellent profiles like F-Log and F-Log 2. Unfortunately though, any of the higher data rate stuff, especially things like ProRes internal, it just can't handle because we've got that UHS-1 SD card slot. We just don't have the throughput to be able to do those high data rate recording modes. We're gonna have to do a lot more testing when it comes to video on the full review, but it looks like it might be a bit of a toss up for video applications when it comes to the X106, whether it's gonna be the right choice for you. Jordan really loved shooting the X100V when we did our X100V review because that 26 megapixel sensor is just better optimized for video applications. The 40 megapixel sensor here is definitely better for photography, might not be ideal for video, but we'll see that when we get a chance to test it. So it has been four years since the X100V came out and not much has changed as far as the handling and design of this camera goes, the menu systems, the controls, but keep in mind that the X100V is an incredibly loved camera. It was one of our favorite products. I really enjoyed my experience shooting that camera. So I'm getting the exact same familiar experience here. The things that have changed, the better sensor, the better tracking focus, the IBIS, these are substantial things that really make this a vastly superior photographic camera to then even the X100V. And if you're still waiting for that camera, I would say this is absolutely instead the way to go. I'm also curious to see how this particular camera is gonna be received and will it be as popular as the X100V, which really exploded. It's an interesting thing to also talk about because up to this point, all the X100s were made in Japan, but the X106, this is now made in China. Maybe that will alleviate some of the production woes that Fujifilm has had before. We're gonna wait and see on that. So lots of questions, lots of mysteries to be solved. We are absolutely gonna take a look at this camera when we have full production copies for review. So stay tuned, make sure you subscribe, click that notification bell so you don't miss that. And of course, leave your comments below. Let us know what questions you have about the upcoming X106. We'd absolutely love to do that. Thanks to Jaron, of course, for flying up here to bring us this camera so we could play with it in person. And don't forget the podcast as well. It's on the exact same channel here or watch it on all your favorite podcasting apps. Just search for Petapixel Podcast. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you soon with more episodes on Petapixel. Petapixel.